We're looking at the most technologically advanced greenhouse in the world because the air distribution system that we have pushes air through fans into the greenhouse to create an overpressure environment. Tehachapi is a very special area in California simply because of the elevation that we're at with the four seasons that we're getting allows us to have an actual winter and we get a kill off of the pests. We actually don't spray our crops. We get the perfect light conditions. We have good water, the perfect environment to put a greenhouse. We currently have 64 acres under glass of growing area. We currently employ anywhere from 225 to 250 people on a daily basis. We have 245 acres of land and we plan to put 128 acres of greenhouse. Over Overall out of this facility will produce in and around 2 to 2.5 million cases of peppers, tomatoes, grape tomatoes. We ship products from this facility all over North America. Our main retailers are Costco, Sam's Club, Walmart, Kroger's, Albertsons, you name them we send it to them. Triassic name came from the soil that this, our vines are planted on. They go back 220 million years ago. It has some characteristics that are very good in drainage and elements in the soil and the quality of the wine that comes from the grapes, we've found out to be very exceptional. During the growing season, we have very similar climate to Napa. When it's not growing, like right now it's winter time, we have very harsh winters, but the vines are asleep. And so it doesn't matter. We've entered some contests and San Francisco Chronicle is the largest one in the world for California wines. And we got a double gold for our Zinfandel, gold for our Syrah, silver for a blend of those two wines, and then two bronze metal with our vignettes. So it's shown that this area can produce quality wine. And a lot of people from Bakersfield and Palmdale, Lancaster, want to come for wine tasting and then they find out about the Hatchaby. I've found that something that's unique about the wine industry that brings people to the area that other types of industries don't. The culinary program at Cafe 1600 is through Bakersfield Adult School and it's a 18 week course and it's split into a front half and a back half of the house in an American Bistro style restaurant. This is the best environment they can have because these students are cooking lunch for the public and they're handcrafting it. We teach them from making dressings, soups, we make our own burgers, we have a hostess, cashier, they actually go to the tables, they wait on the customers. They're able to take all this knowledge that we're giving them and be able to go out and the first day get a job and be able to work that day without hardly any training. Also, they learn what's the elements of how being successful in a restaurant, owning your own restaurant. What I like, I actually love about this program, that everything is hands-on. We're learning about cooking preparations from recipes and being creative on our own. This is a partnership with the County of Kern and America's Job Center. We've been really fortunate that they shared our vision. We wanted to do something a little bit different, something where the students really got the hands-on experience that really dives into to cooking and serving. We want good flavored food. We want people to come back. Townsend Design was founded in 1984 by Jeff Townsend, who is a local graduate from North High School. Townsend has continued to develop multiple patents through the years. We've expanded greatly the range of orthopedic braces that we make. Essentially, any type of patient who has some type of mobility or a functional limitation due to an injury or some type of clinical condition, such as a stroke, can now benefit from braces that we make right here in Bakersfield. Well, we've braced uh, multiple professional and collegiate athletes for the years. Olympians have worn our brace. John Elway, playing for the Denver Broncos, wore our brace during the Super Bowl. Two recent number one draft picks for the NFL also wore our brace. We do patients from all walks of life, all ages, all occupations. All of our competitors that make knee braces now make their braces in Mexico or in Asia. We're still not only in the United States, but we're local in the United States. Almost 200 employees, 90,000 square feet of production space here in Bakersfield, and yet we're a really good uh, kept secret in terms of people not even knowing our business exists here. So our goal at Southern California Edison is to create that 21st century power network that can handle all our energy needs. Utility scale energy storage like this is a key component in modernizing the grid and integrating more clean energy. From an unknown concept, storage has become one of the hottest items in the electricity business. This 6,300 square foot facility are 604 battery racks, each holding 18 modules, and each module holds 56 cells. The work done here will lead to storage as a fundamental component of a greener, more resilient, and more cost-effective grid. The Tehajapi Energy Project is a key milestone for the energy industry and the society as a whole. This project 
is one of the largest energy storage project in the world. So it's one of a kind, first of its kind. So we are quite proud of that. The Day Reporting Center is really a one-stop shop for criminal offenders to really turn their life around. And what's unique about it is we look at their criminogenic needs, those things that are causing them to repeat and recidivate, create criminal behavior. And we get an individual case plan and we uh, address those individual needs with programming all on site. And so the offenders come here every day, they get drug tested, alcohol tested, they're put into special programming. And on top of that, they have to do community service as well as look for employment and get employed. Now that I'm in the program, it's, it's shown me the difference of what, what life is about and what I had the problem I did have. And now I've actually got, to, got control of my life, which was really hard to do. For the general fund, it costs absolutely nothing. We're using state funding that comes in either through AB 109, prison realignment and funds or other state funds. The exciting thing on top of that though is the return that you get on the investment. We've done internal studies and it shows that 70% of those who graduate do not reoffend. We're no longer just sending people through the criminal justice system. We're giving them the tools that they need and we're holding them accountable, but at the same time we're going to have more productive citizens and that's what's great about this program. We have students from over 30 different countries that come here to the National Test Pilot School both for short courses and for our uh, year-long professional course. In the world, there are seven recognized test pilot schools by uh, the Society of Experimental Test Pilots, of which we are one. We're the only private uh, civilian school here in the United States. While they're here, they're going to fly somewhere between 15 and 25 different kinds of aircraft. That's everything from uh, helicopters, small propeller planes, mid-sized turboprop planes, fighter jets, trainer jets, and business jets, and even all the way up to uh, airliner size airplane. Our test pilots and flight test engineers that graduate from the program will go back to their home country, their, their home organization, and they'll be used to evaluate aircraft that are either already on staff and they want to try to use them on a different mission, or a new airplane that they're considering to purchase, or evaluating a new system that somebody wants to put on the airplane. So our primary mission is you know, training flight test engineers and test pilots, but our secondary mission is, is we're, we're out here improving worldwide relations, one test pilot and one flight test engineer at a time. We started in 1998 with mental health of uh, mobile evaluation teams to, to help us deal with the, the mentally ill in the field. We've now taken the next step and we have virtual met. Do you have a deputy in, say, Ridgecrest who gets a call of someone that has a mental health issue? He can then, with his iPad, uh, contact the, uh, our comm center who puts them in contact with a mental health worker who has an iPad. They can, while at a scene, get a consultation, get an evaluation, arrange if they, if they want to leave the person there for one of our staff to come by maybe the next day to check on the person. And so you can do this evaluation without having to drive them all the way to Bakersfield and take that deputy out of that substation area for a minimum of four hours. This is an example of working together to be more effective, more efficient, and actually provide a better service. In a time of, of personnel shortage is a great benefit to the Sheriff's Office, it's a great benefit to the mental health uh, agency, and it's a great ben benefit to our citizens who have mental health issues. Hi, my name is Brett Horton. I'm the mine manager at U.S. Forex. Innovation has always been a large part of our culture, starting back in the 1800s, where we used the 20 mule teams to move borates from Death Valley about 165 miles to Mojave. Currently, we operate the largest open pit in California. We move about 25 million tons a year with these type of trucks and make about 1 million tons of finished product. We use a very sophisticated dispatch system to let us know where the equipment is, how fast it's moving, and the overall health or condition of the equipment. A lot of the plant ideas or updates and technology has come from the employees here internally, thinking of new ideas on how to improve systems. Rio Tinto finds that we are the right size and that we have the right culture to pilot a lot of new technologies from across the entire business. The amount of technology it takes to move something this size and move it really efficiently takes a lot of science and engineering. And there's some really neat jobs within mining and some really neat careers.